On Saturday, Father Miguel sent out a text to a few of the friars that were here in Hansville, and it was a great surprise because he said that one of the sisters who's going to be entering religious life on Saturday, Sister Emily, was going to be entering the cloister. And it's a very private ceremony. It's not public in a sense as it's not announced really. It's very private between the sisters and the family. And so I've been here for 18 years now as a friar and I've never had the chance to attend one of those ceremonies. And so immediately I got that text, it's like, I switched my gears. I, I totally had to attend that, that ceremony. And I have to say it was very encouraging um, because there's something very powerful about witnessing the gospel uh, being alive, about somebody answering the call. Um, even in the very beginning stages when somebody enters religious life, a lot of times you hear about it in books, uh, you hear about it and you read articles about people's vocation stories and their narratives and all the different things in their life that kind of led up to them entering religious life. But to actually see somebody enter, and it's like very, it was very dramatic. I think a lot of people think, when they think of the cloister life, a lot of people have so many kind of misconceptions. Um, and we were having a little talk here um, at, before um, sister, before they uh, knocked on the door, and I'll show you the, the door where they um, knocked, but, uh, you know, one of the family members said uh, a comment about, you know, this is the last time um, you're going to see your sister, um, uh, and she's going to be behind bars, and all the family is going to see her uh, behind uh, uh, bars in the, in the, in the, in the parlor. So, right there behind those doors are the parlors. And it kind of hit me, and I've thought this before, but I just thought I would say it in front of the family, and I think it really kind of moved them. And I said, you know, I said, maybe it's not her, Emily, your sister, that's gonna be behind bars. Maybe we are behind bars, if you think about it. Because in, in the religious life, in the cloistered life, they have a grate, they have the bars in the parlor. And, but I've witnessed this in, this in the sisters in their beautiful consecrated life, that when people come in, that there's, this, there's a sense of the sacred, that, that there's almost a veil between you know, their life and our life, uh, the life that they choose of consecration to God and the life that they leave behind. So in reality, when they look out upon us, they see us behind bars. <laughs> so the ceremony was so beautiful, just very simple again. And when the sister, Father Dominic, was here to bless her, and Sister Emily, at the time she wasn't Sister Emily, now she's called Sister Emily as a postulant, and she'll be giving a new name, God willing, uh, in a year, and then she'll go through two years of novitiate. But she came here to this little spot right here, and she knelt down here, very close to the door, and she knocked on the door. I'm not gonna do it because I don't want the sisters to come to the door. <laughs> but notice that the doorknob is not there. Notice that there's no doorknob on this door. The door is open from the inside. So in the consecrated life, specifically in their life of consecration in the cloistered life, they choose a life of union with God and their community discerns and they open the door from the inside to welcome. You know, people don't come down and open their door here, but their door, this door, this enclosure door is sacred. It's almost like a veil between heaven and earth, you know. All her family was behind us and she was kneeling here. The door opened almost very dramatically, um, very simply. And, and um, Mother Paschal, Mother Mary Paschal was now the abbess. And she opened the door and the sisters were all behind and all happy, jubilant, happy. Um, and looking out at the family. And the rest, she just simply asked one question. What do you desire? Emily, what do you desire? And there's this kind of a beautiful um, 
I can't really recount what it, what she says, but basically something about, I ask the prayers of the community in this time of discernment um, as I enter into a, a discernment of my vocation to um, spend my life before the Lord in Eucharistic adoration, awaiting that great, great meeting between bridegroom and bride, um, which is the church, uh, bridegroom in Jesus. And you know, Sister Mother Paschal says, enter into the joy of the Lord. <laughs> and when she said that, it was so incredible. And Emily gets up and she crosses the threshold into the enclosure and she is embraced by the community. And then the door closes you know, very slowly and then click lock. And we're all just left out here, just almost in amazement thinking, what did I just see? What did I just experience? I just experienced somebody giving their life totally to God, uh, giving their life in total consecration to God and really discerning that. She's in the point of discernment. Uh, so I just share with you that story, hoping that you will be inspired, whatever your vocation is in life. I think anybody, when they see somebody give their life to God, it inspires you to give your life more to God, whatever your vocation may be, whether you're married or discerning marriage or me in religious life, 18 years and coming up on 10 years as a priest. When I experienced that kind of dramatic gospel coming to life, I was encouraged and I wanted to live my life, the vows that I have taken in poverty, chastity, and obedience, I wanted to live them more fully just by the example of this young girl giving her life completely to God. Please click on the tabs to subscribe, to like, and to comment. We always enjoy your comments and also to pass this along to anybody that you might think might have a vocation to the priesthood or even to the religious life, to the cloister life even. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.